Support Bluefin University in the production of more videos by visiting the link in the description below where you'll find more details. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about the discovery of the electron by J.J. Thompson in 1897 via the cathode ray tube experiment. I guess the first question we should ask ourselves is what is a cathode ray tube? It's really just a sealed off container of glass with no air inside of the tube and it's shaped kind of like this. If you turn your head to the left it kind of looks like a flask of some sort. Anyway, at the, at the left end here we've got two little pieces of metal and each of these pieces of metal is connected to a power source. So when power is applied, what happens is a beam shoots off from this first piece of metal all the way through to the end of the tube and it causes a little glow at this end of the tube because of the special coating on the inside of the tube. It's a phosphor coating. So it lights up. Okay. So Thompson sees this and he thinks, okay, what is this tube or what is this tube's ray? What is this ray made up of? What is this beam made up of? And he thinks and wonders, okay, does this thing have a charge of some sort, an electrical charge? So what he does, pretty genius, uh, he grabs a magnet and he holds it kind of around the tube. Okay. And he tries to see what, what's going on with the with the ray, if this affects it. And so what he notices is that the beam bends, the ray bends in this magnetic field. That's the observation that he makes. The ray bent in a magnetic field. So his conclusion was that if that because this ray bent in this magnetic field, that this ray must contain charged particles, right? Because something that's charged will will bend in a magnetic field. Okay. So then he wonders, okay, what charge is this? Okay. So then what he does is he takes two plates, two metal plates, one of them being positively charged and one of them being negatively charged. And he wants to see what which direction the beam will bend in. So he checks it out and he sees that the ray bends towards the positive plate. The ray bent towards the positive plate. So what was the conclusion there? Well, if something, if this beam is attracted to this positive plate, then it must contain a negative charge, right? Because opposite charges attract. So his conclusion was that the ray must consist of negatively charged particles. Okay. So then what? So there were a few different observations that he made, a few different conclusions that he drew from them. So we already said that he the ray bent in a magnetic field, so that led him to conclude that the ray must contain charged particles, right? So there was something charged in the beam. And then he noticed that the ray bent towards the positive plate, which meant that it must have negatively charged particles specifically, right? And then what he did was he switched out the metals that he had in the cathode ray tube. So he did it for a bunch of different metals. And what he found was that the ray was identical for all different medical, metal cathodes that he used. So his conclusion there was that the negatively charged particles are in all matter. Okay. So we have these negatively charged particles, and these negatively charged particles exist regardless the be the beam being is or excuse me the 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 ray is identical for all these different metal metal cathodes. Which that means that these negatively charged particles exist in all matter. So he com he combined um, that that uh, that this these different pieces of knowledge as well as the fact that the, these negatively charged particles, which he called electrons, by the way, he called them electrons. Um, he combined that with knowledge that these electrons were about 1,000 times smaller than the smallest atom that was known, right? Smaller than the than a hydrogen atom, right? Which is the smallest atom. Which meant that there is something smaller than an atom, thus disproving Dalton's model, right, of the billiard ball model. Because if, he, he says in his one of his postulates that Atoms are tiny, indivisible particles, right? 
it, well, if there's something, these electrons namely, and they're a thousand times smaller than the smallest atom, then there must be some, then that means atoms are divisible into subatomic particles, right? So these observations, these observations led to what was called the plum pudding model. And we'll talk about the details of that in actually the next video. Okay, so that'll be in the next video. We'll see what that looks like. Thompson also did, what he also did was he calculated the electron's charge to mass ratio. Okay, so this little E with a superscript that's a, that's a minus sign, uh, that is, represents the electron. Because electron, of course, starts with the letter E, and the minus sign indicates a negative charge. So he calculated the, the charge-to-mass ratio, which is E over M. Okay? And um, where E specifically is the magnitude of the electron's charge, because the actual charge of an electron would be negative E because ne electrons are negatively charged. So, and then of course, M is the mass. So the ratio between the two, he found to be 1.758821 times 10 to the eighth C per G. C stands for Coulomb, so it's Coulombs per gram. And Coulombs are basically the SI unit for charge, okay? So now, what was interesting is that he couldn't actually calculate the charge itself or the mass itself. Right? He couldn't chart he couldn't calculate either one, so he calculated the ratio. Okay. So the question is, what about the charge and or the mass themselves, right? Uh well Robert Milliken's oil drop experiment kind of reveals the secrets of that question. Okay. So we'll see that in a future video as well. Hope that video was helpful in kind of understanding the cathode ray tube experiment. Definitely be sure to watch the plum pudding model video to make sure that you understand. Uh, what's going on as far as the the development from from Dalton's model to this new model? Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, be sure to hit it with a like and subscribe for more content. Also, follow Move University on the different social media links in the description below. Thank you and happy studying.